fans do not miss our live nba draft show on thursday we'll have me adam stanko of the pac-12 network and dave dufour going through the strengths and weaknesses of each pick plus examine how they'll fit with the team that drafts them we'll be live on youtube periscope and facebook live so mark your calendars for the best draft coverage anywhere dennis smith jr played point guard at north carolina state and as a freshman, had an impressive year across the board. His game is reminiscent of Markel Fulks, minus a little bit of the polish, and he certainly brings big-time athletic ability to the table. While he's listed at 6'3", he's really a shade over 6 feet tall, and this could be an issue for him finishing at the rim over the monsters in the NBA. His wingspan is 6'3", again, not very impressive, and could be a problem when trying to stop the most elite position in the NBA. Pick and roll was his most common mode of attack out of the offense, and as you can see, when he could find his seam, he could get people out of their seats. He was crafty at rejecting the screen, then getting to the body of the big for athletic finishes like this off the glass. He's got strength, and defenders would bounce off him as he goes left into a pull-up, something he did most often in this direction. While not an elite three-point shooter, he was able to hit off the dribble and the ball screen at enough of a rate to keep the defense honest where they couldn't go under the screen to contain. He commanded so much control of the offense that they would continually set ball screens for him until he can get an opening, rejecting the screen again to find a right-handed drive and a beauty of an off-foot finish. However, he had a severe turnover problem in the pick and roll. A quarter of all his possessions ended in a turnover, and while he did force some passes, he also had teammates that struggled to catch the ball. And this won't be as much of a problem when he gets to the next level with players who can actually catch. The majority of his assists came in the pick and roll, and there were moments he displayed very good court vision. But sometimes, he'd miss the openings, like the roll man here, before bringing it back out, setting up a brand new pick and roll, but then spotting an open player on the weak side with an amazing pass that somehow got through to his teammate. He also seemed to master the law pass as well, but these types of plays won't be that easy when he gets to the NBA and has more pressure on him as he passes, and bigger, faster players ready to whack these passes out of bounds or into turnovers. Next up is Isolation, where he scored very well as the focal point of the Wolfpack offense. He has a nice mid-range game of pull-ups, like this 10-footer off the glass, and when going left, he favored the pull-up instead of getting all the way to the rack, like this step back from the free throw line. My main issue with this game is how he doesn't always attack on the catch, preferring the jab step and stagnate the offense, even though he showed the ability to hit threes this way out of isolation. This is where he'll have to earn his money at the next level, being able to rise up off the dribble and hit threes like this to open up drives to the hoop. Going right, he'd get closer to the hoop more often and display some more of that great athletic ability, hang time, body control, and touch. But here was one instance of him isolating, driving to his left in the nice hesitation, and then just obliterating the rim with the windmill. Wow. Smith was also very good in transition, able to be a coast-to-coast -coast monster that few college players could stop in the open court. It's unclear to me if he'll really be able to do this at the NBA level, and I'm leaning towards it being unlikely, as the level of player and athlete getting back is significantly better than what he faced in the ACC. I do like how he can come down under control, use a change of pace scissors through the legs, then just blow by his man in the delayed fast break, and here's a nice lefty finish. Another way he can make an impact at the NBA level is pull up threes in transition, and while he doesn't hop much on his shot, this one was a beauty. His spot up game was up and down, which makes me think playing off the ball won't be his strong suit. Most of the issues I see is that he's not a natural attack on the catch player, allowing the defense to catch up to him when he receives the ball, and it leads to tough shots. And when he tries to catch and shoot threes, he often would hesitate before shooting, and the interruption of the rhythm certainly affects his shooting percentage. Compare that to the rhythm he has when he goes right into his shooting motion, it's night and day, and a key to unlocking more threes. There was more evidence of his reliance on the jumper when driving left, instead of getting all the way to the hoop, leading to difficult shots, and it's something he can improve upon, being more aggressive with his left hand dribble. Defensively, I like his energy and stance, but he certainly likes to reach a lot, which could lead to some problems against NBA guards, who will simply not give up the ball off the dribble from a simple hand swipe. He did a decent job at angling players away from the hoop, but also showed penetration by his man often. 
He tended to stray out to midcourt to try and pressure his man and would lead to him getting beat off the dribble time and again. While I like the effort, if he tries to do this type of defense in the pros, it's going to be a problem, so we'll need to adjust how he defends the point guard position. I'd also see him getting beat when not stretching himself out on the floor, and if he can clean up his footwork and not waste steps getting going, he'll be a lot better off. But I do like his quick hands, and he got a lot of steals from flashing them out and knocking the ball away. If a player got too close to him, he had a knack of knocking it loose and recovering it for steals, and this might be a way for him to have a positive effect on the defensive end in the NBA. And if a player was too nonchalant on a pass in his vicinity, he had the quickness and vision to snatch it away, creating more opportunities for his offense. So there you have it, sports fans. Dennis Smith is projected to be a top 10 pick this year, and in the right situation, I can see him developing into a solid NBA guard. His athletic ability could put him into a tier above this, but I'd need to see some more polished skills before I'd feel comfortable saying he's going to be a legit player. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell to turn on notifications so you can get all of our great content hot and fresh. We've got tons of scouting videos, and don't forget our live show this Thursday during the NBA Draft. You in?